Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Stardom Space and Science Network's web series on astronomy, Clear Skies. I'm George. And I'm Eric. And today we're at the Space Foundation in Colorado Springs. We're gonna walk you through some of the questions you might have about astronomy, things you're curious about, but you don't quite know where to go to get the answers from. Stuff like, what's a telescope? What's a telescope? Yep, that's right. Today we're gonna to talk about what makes a telescope, a little bit about how one works, different types of telescopes, and how they can be used. The definition of a telescope is an optical instrument that uses a system of lenses or mirrors to make a distant object appear larger, either through a refracting telescope, which is the lens variation, or a reflecting telescope, which is the kind that uses mirrors. Telescopes have only been around for a little over 400 years. Before that, all observations were made in the night sky with the naked eye. Now people could see things like the moon, and they knew that some of those lights in the sky moved around a little bit differently than everything. They knew that parts of the sky, when you looked at them, they were a little bit fuzzy, but they couldn't quite make out what they were because they couldn't see them up close. Then it all changed in 1609 when Galileo created the first telescope used for astronomy, which magnified the sky by 20 times. With that telescope, he was able to study the moon and identify specific craters and mountains, note how Mars appeared to change its size during its orbit, he was able to study Saturn, able to discover three moons of it, and the rings, which he thought were moons originally, and the four largest moons of Jupiter, which are now named after him, the Galilean moons. Now, for more about the history of astronomy, go back, watch episode one. So, there are two basic types of telescopes, and whether you buy them in a local store or whether you order them online from a telescope distributor, they all operate on exactly the same basic principles. The first kind is called a refractor, and this is the type of telescope that Galileo made. What it does is it uses a series of lenses to gather light and focus it down to your eye. A good example of a basic refractor is the type of spyglass that a pirate would use. It's cute, very cute. They also work the same way as glasses. So, as nice as your pirate spyglass is, how about we show them what a real refractor looks like? This is a basic refractor. It has a long tube with a lens at this end and the eyepiece down here. So how it works is the light comes in through here. It's gathered and focused by this, travels down the tube down to the mirror here. And it then comes out here into the eyepiece, comes through the focuser, and that's just basically how this kind of works. It has usually two, in some cases three or even four lenses for specialized refractors. However, the most common is two lenses, that's called a chromatic refractor. We also have this thing called chromatic aberration, which is caused with the No, no don't start going off about aberrations, please, please, please. No. They need to know about it though. Oh, Go ahead. Chromatic aberration is caused when the different wavelengths of light don't focus at the same point, which is like I mentioned, that's why they use different types and they use several lenses because if you're looking at a bright object through a refractor telescope, like for example Venus or Jupiter or the Moon, you'll often see a colored halo around the object, which is usually blue, purple, or orange. And like I said, this is caused because the different colors of light do not focus at the same point. This also causes a loss of detail on the surfaces of the planets. However, this is solved by a specific type of refractor, which uses lenses made of different materials to not completely fix this issue. However, it typically removes this effect to the point where you can't even see it visually anymore. And often not even the photographs either. Are you done? For now. Great. So the second type of telescope that you need to know about is a reflector telescope. Now, reflector telescopes were invented by Sir Isaac Newton, so you'll often hear them referred to as Newtonians or Newtonian reflectors. Okay? Instead of lenses, they use a series of mirrors curved mirrors to collect and reflect the light up to a secondary mirror and then through an eyepiece where it focuses the light into your eye. Since refractors are limited in size due to weight, cost, and aberrations, reflectors are often used for large optical telescopes as well as large observatory telescopes. Okay, so here's one of the important parts. Okay, the size of a telescope's mirror or its lens is called its aperture. The size of the aperture determines how much light actually gets into the telescope and determines the faintness of the objects that you can actually see in the night sky. Imagine that this pencil right here is your telescope and the eraser at the end, this is your mirror. 
With a mirror this size, you would be able to see basically nothing at all, because you can only see as much light as is gathered by the mirror. Even if you had little tiny eyes? Even if you had little tiny eyes, it's only collecting this much light. Okay, so now imagine that your mirror is this big around. Okay, that is a lot more light gathering capability. All that extra light coming in is able to be focused up into your eye. Therefore, you can see fainter and fainter objects. The bigger the mirror, the fainter the object in the night sky that you can see. The mirror is only half of what it takes though. The other half is the eyepiece up here, which is what actually focuses and collects the light and directs it into your eye. With Hallie, if you just look into the focuser, all you see is the reflected image of the mirror. So you can actually try this if you have your own telescope. Take the eyepiece out, you look into it, you see the image of the mirror, whatever it's pointed at, and then the crosshair is caused by the mounting of the mirror. Okay, now there's other parts of the telescopes which are just as important as the mirror and the eyepiece. Depending on the type of telescope you have, you could have things like... For refracting telescopes, you often have a setup like this. This is the tripod, this is just what it sits on. This is the actual important part. This is called an equatorial mount. It has two main components that allow the telescope to turn on both axes. These are the right ascension declination axes. We'll talk more about celestial coordinates in a later episode. But basically what it does is it allows it to turn in the two basic directions, which easily allows it to track stars. And if you align it with north, the nice thing about these mounts is that if these are aligned with Polaris, or if you happen to live in the southern hemisphere with the southern celestial pole, you're actually able to follow objects without having to do what you have to do with this kind of mount, which is turn it up and sideways. You only have to turn one control on this type of mount. Now, this type of telescope is called the reflector. It's also called the Dobsonian. This particular one is a 10-inch XTI from Orion. Okay, so with a, with a knob, what you've got instead of lenses in the front like that one, like a camera, what you've got is a big mirror on the bottom. Light travels down the tube. It's reflected off the mirror, focused back up onto a secondary mirror, which sits here in the middle. Then it comes out through the eyepiece, up into your eye. Instead of having to turn knobs to move your telescope, this one is actually called push. You take it, you push it wherever you want it to go. It's easy to use, it's a little bit bigger, but bigger is better. Bigger mirror, don't forget, more light collecting capability. So what does all this mean for you? How do you know what kind of telescope you want to get? How do you know to actually use it? Well, what telescope you want to get depends on what kind of astronomy you want to do. You need different telescopes if you want to just look at the planets, look at the moon, than if you would want to look at the deep sky. This actually is a good example of this. This would be more of a planetary scope. It's not as large of an aperture, so it wouldn't be able to look at quite as dim objects. This would be more of a deep sky scope, say if you want to look at galaxies or nebulae or star clusters or something like that. And we're going to answer more questions similar to these in some of our later episodes. So, we hope we've piqued your interest in astronomy, and we invite you to keep coming back for more. For more information on astronomy, space, and science, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, Instagram at Stardom Space, and of course at stardomspace.com. And don't forget, let the kids watch it with you. Kids love to watch other kids doing astronomy. Bye, everybody, and clear, clear skies. What's up, everybody? Ron Sparkman here from Stardom, and we are here today at the Space Foundation. We have been filming our Telescope and Astronomy 101 series, and we are sp uh, speaking today with Travis Shank, the director of the Discovery Center, and we just want to talk to him a little bit about some cool things that are going on here. We're at the Discovery Center, but other cool things go on with the Space Foundation, specifically uh, one of the coolest experiences you'll ever have as a space nerd, I know because I grinned for the whole week of it, Space Symposium. Can you tell us a little bit about Space Symposium and oh, what yeah. goes on? Space Symposium is the largest gathering of space professionals in the world. Uh, every year in April, we put on the Space Symposium here in Colorado Springs at the Broadmoor Hotel. Over 11,000 people attend the Space Symposium and this is one of the places where space really happens. The companies that come together to build some of the spacecraft, the telescopes, or to uh, talk about the science that's happening in space meet for that week. We also have very important things where we get the heads of agencies together in the same room. Uh, we actually last year had 14 heads of agencies in the same room talking about the state of space. And so this is where space communication happens. It's really exciting. For you and me, the most exciting part I think is to walk around and see the exhibits where companies show off their space technology and to see some of the newest things that are out there and some of the proposed things that could come about because of space. 
And I think Jeff Bezos surprised everybody last year. Jeff Bezos of Amazon and Blue Origin uh, decided to bring out one of his rockets that he had launched and landed, uh, one of his uh, launch tested, uh, I believe is what they're calling it, rockets, and erected it in front of the Broadmoor here in the Colorado Springs and then came and did uh, a completely, from what I know, an off-the-cuff interview with everybody. It was super cool. Um, we've had, you know, Buzz Aldrin's been here. Uh, we've had the, everybody from NASA, as he said, everybody, you know, SpaceX is here, Blue Origin's here, uh, Virgin Galactic's here. Everybody's here, so make sure you guys come out and check it out. Where can people find out more information about the Space Symposium that's uh, that's coming up soon? You can find out about Space Symposium on spacesymposium.org, which has all the information about the symposium. There's also some parts of a symposium that you can attend for less than the regular price. That's our Urias Night Party and our Women's Global Gathering. Mm -hmm. Women are becoming an important part of space, and they've always been there, but we need to emphasize more and more their role in space exploration. And so the Women's Global Gathering is something that everybody can attend um, to learn more about the important role that women have in space exploration. Fantastic. And uh, thank you, everybody, for checking us out today on this new episode. And make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.